Best friend to 23. She left her body and hovered above me. <laughs> Best friend to 23. I heard the heavens crying above me. They gained an angel. I lost a friend. I felt like dying again and again. I went to hell instead of death. But I keep fighting with each living breath. I saw no way out from where I stood. Felt like the fire had burned me for now. You're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's time to get better. your self-righteous symphony I would rather let this go than to bring it up again what's going on you guys welcome back to the burly fishing podcast live edition hopefully you guys got your pops your dad pops your mom pops your kid pops 
We're gonna hang out tonight. We're gonna have a good time. We got a we got a pretty pretty broad spectrum show here. It's kind of hey buddy, what's up? It's, it's <laughs> Paul's kiddo who's like, where's the kitty, dude? Bro, the kitty goes meow. <laughs> So we're goofing around before the show. Uh, all right, guys. So we got lots and lots of stuff to talk about here. Here's the topic. Here's the topic. I'll see if I can. Maybe I can make a better title on the spot. You ready for this, Paul? Yeah, These are right. five fishing skills that we all need to practice, which is exactly Paul's title. <laughs> These are five fishing skills that you guys need to practice things that you should consider getting into, maybe trying out, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to dance around here, try some different stuff. Maybe things you're not comfortable with, maybe things you haven't done before, but if you want to be, you know, I guess truly labeled a fisherman or woman, maybe you should try these things. I think that, you know, this gives you a true taste of what fishing is. So we're going to dive into it. We got tons of stuff to talk about. Uh, I think it's, you know, Five, what did I say? Five skills. So we got five things to talk about, but you know us. We're going to dive deep. That's what we do. Before we get to that, if you guys like the content, if you want to come back and join us, you can join us every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube or over on Twitch. You can do that as well. We love hanging out with you guys and participate in chat. We got chat. We got super chat if you want to contribute to the show. That helps us out a ton. We got lots and lots of fishing gear that we have to. Uh, spend lots of American dollars on to review and stuff like that. But just just chat with us. Just post something in chat. We'll be sure to hit you up and comment back. And then, of course, you can subscribe to the channel over on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Here, there, everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Paul's Instagram as well. Paul underscore J underscore glass. That's enough self-promotion for today. So let's – oh, yeah, next week, guys, Monday – Monday, got a little Monday or Wednesday next week, Monday or Wednesday, there will be a giveaway. So I don't know, maybe stay tuned for that. Uh, we've got the October wrap up. I actually had so many friggin' boxes this month that it spilled over and October will be over when we do the October giveaway, but rest assured it's coming. It'll be here next week. I'll bring all the boxes back together, except for one that I'm not allowed to talk about anymore. And then we'll talk about those boxes and we'll have a good time and we will do a giveaway. And I've got an absurd amount of tackle right now that was sent to me. Uh, so I'm going to have lots of extras to probably give away. And you guys will learn more about that later. We'll, we'll have some more videos dropping over on the channel later, but Hey, without further ado, Paul, let's, let's roll right into this thing. All right. Oh, fine. Are you done? Great. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> promo, promo, promo. <laughs> Let's get to the show meet. <laughs> All right. We're not even there yet. We're still on the episode oh. question of the week. So I'm my question this week today, is, man. <laughs> my, question, <laughs> my question for this week, when is a lure truly dead? What is a dead lure? Like, when are you rocking something and you're like, RIP, you're officially getting tossed? Uh, I would say it takes, it takes a lot, but let, let's take a body bait, for example. So let's start with that. So let's take a body bait. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, probably when it explodes and maybe, maybe not even then, I, maybe even then you could, if you really liked it, get your epoxy out, you put that thing back together, <laughs> you make the, you Frankenstein that thing, you make that thing work. I don't know. It depends if it, if it were my sunfish eight foot diving Berkeley digger, I would do a lot of things to try and resuscitate it, <laughs> but I would, I wouldn't push it too far because it's also like, what are those costs? Like seven, $7, $8. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Yeah. Pretty I could, much. I could probably go get another one. So I would say if it's an amazing bait, that has a high dollar value and, and or is rare, mm -hmm. then you're going to do obviously more. It's like if there's a sliding scale here. There's, there's uh charts to pull up the chart. We don't have a chart. If, there, if we had a graph <laughs> here, <laughs> it was like expense level to amount of effort put in to fixing said bait. <laughs> it would mm -hmm. be up there. So maybe it's like a really expensive swim bait or something like that for, for the chazas in the room that like swim baits and very expensive lures. I personally, I get just like this anxiety when I throw something expensive on the end of my line because I'm known to lose them rap and in rapid succession. So I, I, I would say I'd put some effort into it, but when is it dead? 
it's probably for a body bait when it splits apart. If a treble breaks, you you swap the treble. If the paint's getting scuffed up, you can you can patch it. You can you know paint over that. You can use a marker like uh, when Rick did his little comparison of LTB versus MP, <laughs> and he got that marker. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you right now, the bill. The bill. Yeah. Once you break the bill. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, R.I.P. That wow factor that I threw into uh, cinder block <laughs> to explode it. Yeah, I've done it like yeah. five or six times this year. Once the bill's broken, like that's it. Like I had a popper that I hit, I cr- like smash into the boat, fix it with some epoxy, no problem, like new, still using it. Um, but no, what, it, the paint is like kind of irrelevant, really. I mean, really. I've, I don't think I've ever used a bait so much that it, like, legit... I have a couple that are... I have one that's almost, like, you said opaque. One yesterday. Exactly. Yeah, I have one that's, like, almost opaque, but, like, it's still... It's, it works great. It might even work just fine if it was clear, for, for all I know. But, uh, uh, no, I have, once the... I have clear baits. Yeah. Once the, once the bait... What's the... Or what's the bill breaks? Like, that's RIP. I will yeah. say this. I use and reuse soft plastics constantly yeah i don't love it but i'm like such a cheapo that like i'll leave it in the boat and then i'll be like oh do i have any more do i have any more senkos oh there's three right here and i'll i'll reuse an old one like no problem is there anybody in the room that has one of these sitting around (laughs) yeah it's in my boat this this would be well paul's is in his boat but let's just say (laughs) end of season you grab all your loose plastics (laughs) and you throw it in a ziploc and then you, you you bring it around with you, and you're like, I'm gonna use these. And then you know what you do? You keep grabbing new plastics, and you keep going like, oh, I have that. I have all these plastics I never use. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I've got people saying yes. <laughs> we're not we're not alone, Paul. Like, yeah. So I have a tray. It's like way behind me here, but I have like a little office supply tray that I put in my boat so I could be neater than Paul uh, for once. Paul, Paul's very neat, by the way. Just that one corner of his boat. Not neat. He likes everything so tidy. He draws the schematics, the schematics for the yak, this guy. And I, I am like, you guys know, it's it's measure twice, drill once, right? Uh, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> wing it. Wing it. Let's go. But like my plastics are more neatly organized in my boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mine's a disaster zone. I just cleaned it out. You can see like the one handful and it's le- a legit full handful. And that was from like three trips. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah it, especially with like the uh on the water box reviews that we do like there's just so so many like random plastics that we just have to use uh and sometimes they're not so durable they just kind of fall apart so you know there's lots of dead plastics either in my truck bed or in the back of my boat that ends up like floating around and maybe you know at some point i clear out of there but generally lives i have like four or five dead plastics in the back of my truck that have just lived there forever and ever and ever so when is it truly dead well is it truly dead if it's not in the trash that's what i'm saying it stay it it'll it has life left up until the time when it's so as soon as it as soon as it's like not the same color that it was when it came out of the bag then i'm like all right maybe because like it's merged with other plastics and it'll be like oh it's black and purple purpley brown now yeah (laughs) yeah that's like when i think the soft plastic has died yeah so in the chat here we've got james and alan going what rod and what reel do you use and they're going back and forth okay uh go with your most use go with your most use i'll give you my most use because i i get this we we get this question a lot all the time and and my my return question is you like which one like because we have what we each have like a main six that we use because we yeah. we do have the Hobie Pro Angler 14 edition where you got the the six rod racks in there, so we take a lot out on the water. But yeah, I would say my I'll give you my two go tos because I can say it quick. My two go tos would be my Ducket Silverado, bra, as I like to call it, the Ducket Silverado, which is my cranking rod with my SLX DC, and that one is a medium heavy. It's a seven three. And it's a, what is that? A fast action. I think it's fast, fast action. Mm-hmm. Yep. SLX DC. I've got the slow gear ratio, like their standard uh, six, six to one gear ratio on that. And then I have my workhorse rod in real setup, which is my Abu Garcia Zada. 
which I just got and am freaking in love with. It's like one of my favorite reels of all time. And the St. Croix Bass X, which is a seven foot medium heavy. There you go. Those, those, those are my two. I use those two the most. And then I have four other rods that I use here and there. Two spinning rods, one I use most. But uh, my I have the exact same casting setup. Silverado, 7.3, medium heavy, fast action. Uh, and it's got a SLX, not DC, and it's in a 7.1. And I love the 7.1. I don't, I only have one rod that's below that, and that's my cranking rod. Um, uh, my other rod that I use the most is a is also a ducket. It's the uh, Triad. It's a 7, I think it's a 7 or a 7.6. It is a medium fast and oh i have a new reel on it as of this week that i am not going to talk about um because it's going to be tested at some point shortly oh yeah oh yeah yeah we do, we do um, have that. but but typically i have a daiwa on there the cabela's brand daiwa in a 2500 this new one that i got is a size 2000 it is better it, it is a better size um but that is like my that's like my finesse setup and that is a killer setup that i use for a ton of stuff those are my two most used. And the fact that they're both ducats is kind of like almost by accident. But they're great rods. I have no Oops. problem with them. <laughs> and they're su- Dude, for 100 bucks, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a better baitcaster for 100 bucks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I want to give a quick shout-out to, to Joe Cincinni. Uh, Killed your last name. I'm great at that. Since any. <laughs> it's a murder. <laughs> he says, my wife almost killed me on a road trip last week. Listen to almost all of your podcasts. Bro, where did you drive? You drove from Maine to, to the, Alaska. S- the southwestern <laughs> tip of California. <laughs> like, also, I apologize to your wife. I don't even want to listen yeah. to my voice for more than 10 minutes. That is brutal. I have never listened to one of our podcasts. Not but that I- just means you have a really strong, you said wife or girlfriend? Wife? That's- wife. That's a legit marriage right there. That thing's built to last. My other footer shot is. me and taken taken the car accident that goes with it. No problem. Facts. <laughs> night, night. Night, night. <laughs> All right. So that's my question of the week. Anything for check-in? Anything big you want to call out on the check-in? He said Illinois to Florida and back. Do we have enough? This is episode 35, by the way. This is, this is our 35th one. So you listen to 34, I'm assuming, episodes, which sometimes are two hours long. So that's <gasps> an epic. That's an epic trip. When, when was your wife like, can these people just shut up? Your wife hates us so much. So I guess th- thanks for that. <laughs> We're like, no, now they're going to go on another road trip and listen to this one. And he'll be like, see? Yeah. <laughs> see? <laughs> Public enemies of this household. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> do not bring burly fishing here <laughs> oh my gosh all right check we're, we're, catch up check in yeah. check in all right dude stuff happened this week lots and lots of stuff happened this week stuff and things good stuff and things i would say um all right where do i where do i start okay so we've opened a lot of boxes this month Tons. i have plethoras of gear I've been unable to achieve all on the water reviews. It's just not going to happen, guys. I'm really sorry about that. It has happened. Finally, wasn't able to do it. Uh, I knew it was going to happen eventually. I was hoping to be able to like push it to November, but uh, I guess that didn't happen. So, uh, Mark Gabriel is saying, "Go, go fishing." Okay, yeah, we we do that, man. Good we tip. Do go fishing. Great. <laughs> Great tip. Solid. Thanks for coming. Uh, but yeah, so I wasn't able to get them all out there, but I did get a chance to fish like half the mystery tackle box and caught a PB pike, like just slithering through the shallows on a bait that I was like, mm, eh. <laughs> this bait is not great. And now I have to eat my words. So there you go. It was the Yozuri Crystal Clear Minnow, a little like floating jerk bait by Yozuri, which let's be honest, guys, it looks cheap. But that's why we do the in the office, like unboxing blind. And like, I've never fished these baits before. And I'm just going off of like, hey, uh, what is this thing? Yeah, this is what this looks like to me. This is what I think. Okay, cool. And then I go fish it because sometimes I eat my words. Sometimes you're surprised, right? And sometimes you are validated in not liking a bait. (laughs) So that's why we do the on the water for sure. (laughs) Alan, why do you want to see my thumb? I'm confused. It's getting weird. (laughs) Guys, 
keep the weirdness to a minimum. <laughs> this is a family <laughs> show, people. All right. So uh, the the pike was amazing. Caught caught a huge pike. Bank fishing did not have pliers. Uh, if that's why you're asking to see my thumb, I still have both of them. Was able to salvage said fish and get him back in the water, and he swam away. And it was fantastic. It was majestic. It was amazing. I was super stoked. I texted Paul immediately. He was mad. That's what happens. Well, that's bullpen. Uh, no, no, no. Check the receipts. I will get them out. <laughs> okay, he was pumped. But then later on, he was like, I'm still like, what did you say? What did you say about the pike? It was like yes, 10 o'clock at night. I'm excited for you. <laughs> it was fantastic. So that was great. He's mad because he didn't beat me with yeah, Mike. Yeah, the- yes. <laughs> yet we'll see remains to be seen uh another cool thing happened and this is gonna uh, i'll end up i'll have to do a video on this but um the guys over at vexan you guys remember vexan uh the main guy i think his name is james jamie i'm gonna slaughter it now so vexan we've said nice things about before they they made our least favorite baits but you guys are not gonna believe this (laughs) but apparently the baits that i've gotten from vexan which have come in mtb and in that fish allure Canada box were not baits that Vexan ever like sold. They literally like made them, decided not to go to the market with them and donated all of them. And then they were later acquired by companies like MTB and fish allure, which is like fine plethora of fishing gear out there to, to distribute. But it's, it's funny. It's just like, it's not a good depiction of what their baits are really like. So the owner called me. And literally just said like, hey, wondering if you can give me feedback on those baits. I gave him some feedback, took it super chill, super cool guy. And then he sent me a giant, I mean, it's like way behind me. I don't know if you can see it back there. Sent me a giant FedEx bag full of crankbaits and square bills that they actually sell and a shirt and a whole bunch of like other stuff, like some treble hooks and stuff like that. I was like, dude, that was one of the coolest things I can say that has happened to like us since running this channel, <laughs> like, and, and like just a phenomenal example of customer service. Like that is awesome for a company to like take feedback from somebody, even if they're not a bass fishing pro, you know, just some guy who opens boxes in his office and goes and fishes stuff. How cool is that? And then to send me a whole bunch of gear, like, Hey, try this. Let's see what this is like. Right. So now I'm going to go test those out, but I just wanted to give them a shout out. Cause I thought that was super cool. Uh, and we'll go fish them and maybe you'll see Vexans popping up in a box at some point, unnamed box. We'll see, <laughs> but we'll see. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. But that was like, that was pretty much my week. And then, uh, Paul and I are, are attempting, attempting, mind you, we'll see what happens to brave the wilderness this weekend and possibly go fish some giant dinosaurs. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Could be fun. No, we're Hope. fishing for swimming dinner. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, it is gonna. The weather's gonna be a little, a little suspect. Twenty-eight mile per hour winds. Uh, forty-five degrees. It's gonna be something. So. Uh. But yeah. The other thing, we also have a couple of videos that we're gonna film this week. Uh. Mostly around doing some custom lures, which I'm pretty excited about. Yep. And then uh, I have some gear that I need to try out. So I got um. A caster and a spinner, and I cannot wait to get them rolling. Um, kind of a we had the mail call rolling, we had the Busby coming in. Cannot wait to mess with those trays. Um, gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm pumped for this week. Um, I did not get to go deer hunting, though, it's still making me mad. So I should have, I probably should have made more time for it, but I say that every year. It's impossible, you can't make enough time, it's not possible. Um, yep, facts. All right, without further ado. Show me. Show me. Show, 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 show me. We are uh, so five skills that everyone needs to practice. Now, when I when I went through these and kind of you know dug through what I created my list, I don't think this is an all inclusive list. These are the five that popped out to me. I don't think that you can ever be too good at any of this stuff, really. I mean, these are things that I feel like everybody needs to work on, um, pro or otherwise. Uh, and if not work on, you at least need to be like, make sure that you're like brushing up on these as a skill set and being aware of like, how good are you at this? And is this something that you need to like kind of bring to the forefront of your mind? Cause all of these things will help you. Um, number one for me, uh, you got to fish the last 30 minutes of your fishing trip 
uh, just as hard as the first 30 minutes of your fishing trip. How many times have you been on the water, you get in the water, you're all jacked up, you're fresh, right? Uh, your mind is right, you're excited. You fish the piss out of every square inch of water that you can see. Two hours later, you're like, slap, 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 nothing there, move on, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it, it still happens to me every time. I remember doing it the last time we went fishing and being like, yeah, I'm just not into it. I'm just, I lost, I lost the gas there at the end. Um, but at the same time, like the last 30 minutes of some, like some of our trips, that's when I'm catching like the best fish of the trip. If you dial them in, right? So there, I, I want to jump on this because <laughs> is it, is it usually me? Like, all right. So let's just say somebody cashes out end of the trip. Is it, would you say it's usually me or you? <laughs> The only time I'll say the most of the time it's not me because the only time it's me is when I have like a deadline because I got to get home. Yeah. All right. So we do have those scenarios, mm -hmm. uh, which we got to bail for daddy duties. You know, we, we, we got kids, we got stuff to do. We got family times. We can't be fishing all the dang time. So that does happen. Um, I wouldn't say that's really, we still kind of fish hard right up until that moment though. There's, there's maybe been like just a few times where, uh, you literally almost died. Uh, it was one example, not a few times that you literally almost died. Just one time Paul was super sick and mm -hmm. like was a trooper all day in like a hundred plus degree heat, just, just literally dying and you could see him dying and he had, he was more pale than he normally is. He was translucent. Unbelievable. And, <laughs> and then like at one point I just turn around, I was off like fishing pads and I turn around and I'm like, Oh, Paul's gone. So I start paddling back bros over just like trying not to die, like in the water up to his waist, just splashing water on his head, just like overheating and dying. Yes. So we had to, we did have to call that one off. And then there was one time recently I can remember where we were on a lake by me and I was just not having a day. I was just not having it. Um, I did catch a few fish. It was like one of those, uh, I think it was the, I think it was the monster bass topwater box. Oh, we yeah. were fishing that day. We mm -hmm. were, and we, we got, you know, we got into a few and it happened in the beginning of the day, but then there was just this big stretch, nothing happening. And like everything I threw was not working and I was just missing fish left and right. And I was like, dude, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I had bad attitude and I just fell apart. And that was one of those where I can say, I definitely did not fish hard the last 30 minutes. <laughs> Of that happened. I I know I but the flip side of it too, like that pike that we caught uh or that I caught last week. Yeah. Like the last ten minutes of the day. And I was like, I didn't I was like, dude, I knew I had to leave. The wind had kicked up and it was raining on us. It was cold. True. It was we an had, awful day. <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't caught anything in like hours, but I was still like, All right, I'm gonna find a good trough in this like dead ass section of water and right at the top of it got smacked by a giant pike. Um, and I can remember other times, like, like uh, very vividly, I don't know, maybe it's just because it was at the end of the trip, but I caught the best smallmouth I've ever caught. It literally two feet at a hole that was two feet from where I was yeah. going to walk out of the river. Yeah. Like, the, the legit last cast. Um, that, one, that, that first time we found that section of the Grand that we've been to a few times since, we caught four or five fish, like, literally on the float out, like trying to get back to the ramp, like at the ramp. Um, it just, and, it, and it's more of like a, it's more of the idea that like you get so jacked up for the first 30 minutes. Right. I mean, you, you, you cast a thousand times to the same spot and you yeah. do it with like the utmost confidence. You're like, I'm going to catch something here. It's water. <laughs> um, you need to like find how the, the, the way that you can optimize that. So you're not, you're not you're not but you're not setting your first 45 minutes on fire by overfishing a spot and then ruining your last hour by not fishing a spot enough. You see what I'm saying? So Paul and I are notorious for this. Notorious so for this. I I would say we've gotten slightly better and we need to continue to be conscious about this. But if you guys like put in and you're like sweet first spot and that first spot you fish for like until you get a bite versus 
a timestamp and you say like, all right, bro, we spent 45 minutes here. We got six hours to fish today. Maybe we should keep moving. That's one, <laughs> almost one sixth of our day. Yes. But like Paul and I have spent legitimately like two four, hours, two to three hours in one spot. And we're like, bro, the mm. fish aren't here. And then we move and then we find them in the last like 30 45 minutes of the trip yeah. we're like why weren't we fishing here all day and if you're in a kayak so many times if you're in a kayak you must have just set your day on fire you're not just like gonna burn to the other side of the lake in like two minutes i mean it's just not a thing so that i i do think that like it, it's more about like it's a it's more about like not the specific 30 minute window or whatever it's more about the idea of like understand that like the freshness of your brain is not going to like make you catch more fish in the first 10 minutes. Like that one spot is not the only spot in the whole lake. Some people, if you're in a boat, they like to do a lap, right? I know that's like a really popular way of like kind of getting that out of your system before you like really go fish something to like make sure that you've sort of inventoried all the cool spots that you think are going to be productive that day. Then you kind of break it down. Um, yeah. You don't necessarily have that luxury all the time in a kayak. And so you really need to pay attention and kind of like check yourself not only for the first, like maybe hour or two, but for like the last hour or two as well. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think that's a great tip. I do want to pause real quick, give a shout out. Marlon is in chat. Marlon runs uh, first responders fishing and or first response fishing. Sorry, they just started their Instagram and we guest started on his podcast yesterday and he was a stellar host and it was yeah. super fun. It was kind of like we podcasted yesterday we podcast today. We're going to podcast tomorrow, Paul. I don't know. And then we're going to tie some stuff and then we're going to go fish some monsters and we're going to have a good time. And yeah, my wife's going to love me. <laughs> hey, that was like a midday. That was like a midday podcast, but I yeah. signed you up for it. And then I was like, bro, it's going to be like 30 minutes. <laughs> we talked to Marlon <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> that was a good time. My bad. I never apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, you just tell my boss. It's cool. Just fire the guy. Sorry. 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 Uh, I do also want to shout out. So we got uh, Mark and Tyler here are struggling a little bit uh, with catching some fish. They're having a tough bite. You know, it's been a tough bite here, too. Like, I get you guys. And honestly, somebody just said try a fluke. Love it. Uh, honestly, for me, it's been jerk baits. And I'll tell you, like, I'm not the first to grab a jerk bait out of the box. I get it. I'm like, I'm a northern fisherman. Like, I should be. That should be like every month forever i should have those ready to go paul does but paul's been forcing me into it and we just caught that giant pike on the jerk bait so i mean i'm a believer trust me guys i'm a believer so throwing that and if if that's not working then it's like the body bait's not working the rattle maybe i love the fluke idea like if you got to go more subtle the fluke money like you can definitely crush on that any any other uh suggestions if the bite i mean let's i'm assuming you guys are going from the bank I'm assuming that because you're not talking about your sonar or anything like finding them. And where so, are you? Yeah, it depends on where you're at. <laughs> Chaz goes swim baits. Somebody else said that in here too. Uh, so yeah, guys, let us know where you're at and ex precisely so we can pinpoint you. <laughs> I don't need your address. General space. Where are you fishing? Like <laughs> down south or what? And uh, are you fishing from the bank or like, what do you got going on? So hit us up with that. Whenever you do, we'll, we'll, we'll chat back. So Bama, somebody's fishing in Bama. Dude, I'm, I'm legit. I'm down. I'm going to, okay. Marlon says dynamite. Bro, that's not a bad idea. It'll work. <laughs> like stuff, I would, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, if you're in Alabama, I would downsize my frog and I would go, I would do the, I would do a spro and I would leave it with a long, the long legs mm -hmm. i that i would start there i would go to stick bait or buzz bait yeah and then if none of that works i would go to the um find the 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 hardest bottom flat where there's like a big open stretch of water that doesn't change depth a lot and is really not um not too super deep like we'll, we'll say two to four feet and mm -hmm. i would the fluke is not a bad idea at all. I would be like, I would be running either. Uh, I, I'm a legit probably square bill. Yeah. Uh, so we got, so it looks like Tyler and Mark are in like New Jersey and Ohio. New Jersey so they're, and they're Ohio. They're more, they're dealing with what we're dealing with kind of. Man. Yeah. Jerk bait is probably your best bet. Square bill is sure. still not a bad idea. A fluke with, um, how am I going to do that? I would do a, I, I might even just go paddle tail with underspin. 
Yeah, paddlefield underspin has been kind of money for me. Searching it, man. I would be yeah. search baiting it. Spinner bait's not also not a terrible idea. That's probably like when I get into a bad spot and I'm like, dude, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Spinner bait allows you to just attack so much water in a great way without getting hung up yeah. and dealing with a bunch of crap. And you can just, I just pound the hell out of the water until I found them. Worst worst case scenario, uh, like if I'm really like. I, I need to catch one fish today. I don't care what it is. I just need to get one, and I'm gonna feel good about. It. I might even go go to a swim jig, and I might attack. I might attack weed lines. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that approach a lot, and I also like going from like searching for them to some guys here are shouting out the Ned rig, which I mean, you guys know is like one of my favorite things. But it's I I, I gotta start finding them or dialing them in before I can really like maximize on that. Otherwise. You know, if you're going for the best technique when the bite is tough with the Ned rig is the dead stick. You're going to just dead stick, you know, well, five spots an hour and like hopefully I, get one. <laughs> I tend to agree with Jeff. I will say, though, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't go. I probably wouldn't go Ned. I, I would probably do. I'm, I'm going for wounded fish. Or like, yeah. like some sort of bait fish presentation still now. The, there is a good point. Like if you if you're in the north, you may have transitioned to like like um, fluke like territory where you're going with like a non vibration, non crazy action, like muted presentation. That on a drop shot, if you rig it right and you have an, a, a light enough weight, you can use it as a search bait and you can you can work that really nicely and and still make it work. I, I'm probably not gonna go Ned unless I know it's like a rock bottom. That's my only. That's probably my only thing. If in the river though, I have no problem using the Ned in the river right now when it's really condensed yeah. and you feel like you're in a good area. I got no problem with that. Dude, the Ned, the Ned on the river during the fall, you guys it's is not fair. there. It's it's so not fair. money. Yeah, it, it's, it's cheat codes. You guys have seen some videos where we go out and we fish the Ned on our river of choice and we can just cast it out literally anywhere. And it's just like, boop, boop. Oh, we got one. <laughs> and like, it's not fair. It's cheat codes. It's amazing. So yeah, I mean, so, on a lake, it, it's a little bit tougher for sure. Um, if you can dial them in, if you can find them, then yeah, you, you, you can use that or you throw a turd spins on it and then fish it moving or doing the lift and swing. Dude, the I'm saying, done. I've done I've done the weightless the weightless screw a screw a spin into the back uh, like a willow leaf into the back of one before done it a bunch of times it works yeah. no doubt amazing um, so that's the river is actually a good segue because my skill number two is actually and this is a little broad I had something specific in mind but I I made it broad fishing the river yep like. It's a, like it, just fishing I'm, it <laughs> and in my brain, though. Yeah. I have kayak fishing in mind and there's a lot sure. of things involved with being like good at river fishing with a kayak. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't a lot of things in boats, too. I mean, with a boat, there's actually probably it's just a whole different set of things you have to think of. But mm -hmm. in a kayak specifically, um, there's so many more things that well, there's a lot of things that you manually need to manage in order to get your presentation right. And, you know. I remember being brand new to fishing out of a boat in the river and think in my brain wanted to work like wading the river. And when you're wading the river, you're always at a good speed at which to cast because you are not moving. <laughs> but when you're in the river, you're actually moving when you're in a kayak, yeah. like you're in a boat and you you can miss your spot in a heartbeat. Just yep. like, ah, nah, nah, that was what I was trying to fish. And then what you don't realize too is when you're moving, uh, you only make you may only get one or two shots at your spot unless you mm -hmm. drop anchor or have a drag anchor or something like that or, or the current's not very strong and you can burn spots real fast um re real fast and potentially yeah. if you're not pedaling and you're headed downstream you may only get one shot at like a really nice like pool right you oh, may only get one float? shot at it yeah if you're doing a float yeah. you may you and you can't it's too the, the current's too fast for you to paddle back up you may only get one shot. And so some of the skills that are involved are one, paddle management is actually a really big deal. Having your paddle in your lap and be able to one-handed cast and then manage your the direction you're facing, where your prow is, big deal. Um, yep. Knowing how 
how fast the current is moving, be able to cast upstream of your target and swing your lure right where it needs to be, whether you're drifting it, whether you're drifting it along the bottom, bouncing it, whether it's a crankbait and you're going to let it sit for a second or drop till it's at the right depth, whatever it happens, even if it's just yep. live bait and you're going to drift it through a seam, like that is something that's very important. Um, managing your speed. So I use a drag anchor. I pretty much never put another anchor on my kayak. And it's basically just like a 20 foot rope tied to the back. And it's got any number of chains that are just dragging me. Um, mm -hmm. It's not stopping me, but it's, I'm going a lot slower than the current. It is the, I think it's, I find it to be the easiest way to manage your speed, but the, even that takes some skill too. Um, getting that, getting that dialed in. Um, yeah, not th running into things. <laughs> yeah, not, knowing knowing. I th I think one of the skills that I've had to acquire w with jumping on board the drag chain situation is knowing how many chains you need because I've gone, you know, up like slower rivers and uh, slower than I expected current rivers where I've had three chains and I needed one and a half and I dropped the three chains. And I'm like, cool, I'm now stopped and you can literally stop in a river without a real anchor. <laughs> which oh, yeah. is, not ideal if you're trying to like just cast and move. Um, but yeah, like that, that is kind of cheat codes and it, it's really cool to do this, which is why, you know, part of why I think it's on this list. One of the skills you guys need to practice with is, you know, you get used to like pinpointing a spot, knowing how much time you have to fish it mm -hmm. and just like letting yourself roll through it and then trying to hit like the front side of a lay down and the back side of a lay down. Like that's super cool, especially if you're flipping like jigs or neds or something on the river that's you just flip the front <laughs> you're like maybe they're here nope nope they're on the back side like that's a lot of fun that is, it's a ton of fun we we fish rivers a lot you guys have seen it on videos like probably what are we 50 50 it's gotta like, be yeah it's gotta be 50 50 like river is almost my my primary choice though if i can go out and do that and and generally speaking depending on what's going on with weather and you know the the flowage and you know all of that like I can generally say if I go to the river, I'm going to catch a nice smallie today. Probably a pike too. Like it's going to be a good day. But on lakes, I don't feel as confident. So I, that's probably almost why it's 50-50. I'm like, dude, let's just hit the river. Let's just well, do that. I think the other thing too about a river is if you fish the same stretches long enough, you'll find that certain spots just aren't productive. Yeah. And, and and it's just like a lake. You'll you'll hit it where you're like, yeah, there's pretty much only carp over there. I'm not gonna find anything else, which is fine. And if you like carp, great. But you're gonna find that you're gonna find patterns. And that's another thing about fishing a river that I think gets overlooked is, and it kind of relates to skill number one is like, you get in the river, you start fishing. And and I there are times when I do not do, I just don't do that. And I I I have a stretch of river in mind where I know the first quarter to a half mile. Yeah, you can cast it all day. You might catch four or five fish. None of them are going to be big. And you're not going to find them in the same spot. And they're not resident fish. They're just bumping around. If you yeah. go up that half, three-quarter mile, um, you're in the money spot. And you're in a spot that has a lot of pools, that has temperature changes, that has tall grass in some areas, and a trough on either side of the bank. And you can just lay into them. But if you don't like, if you don't, like, learn how to read the water... And you don't figure out like the difference between a hole and a seam and a riffle and a blowdown and a laydown and 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 how to fish grass and you know you know it it takes it's like there is a talent to to learning how to fish the river even just planning a river trip like how long should I be on the river today yeah like like how long is this float really gonna take me a four hour float is like a long. <laughs> long day. that's a six hours if you're fishing yeah if you're fishing it hard it's much longer we we've learned that lesson the hard way a few times and we we've dragged our friends through the dirt with that one <laughs> so some people one, don't want to fish the last 30 minutes as hard as the first 30 minutes i'll, I'll refer back to skill one. <laughs> one 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 mile is like that could be three days it's forever fish. yeah yeah um and yeah it but it is a skill it really is and i've seen people i've seen people in like big sit on top kayaks um get into a relatively small river mm -hmm. like the thorn apple and i've watched dudes who just look so comfortable in the river don't have a care don't have a thought they fish whopper ploppers down to ned rigs down to whatever your crankbaits and you just watch them switch lures and they look like they're just doing what they do 
And yeah. I've seen people who are uncomfortable. They don't really know where to look for fish. They see a good spot. They they don't have the the skill ready to like really fish that spot effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, they look uncomfortable changing lures. They'll never throw a top water because they think it won't work in the river. Um, you know, and, and it just it it can be really hard if you're inexperienced. So, and I, I don't think you can be comfortable enough fishing in the river, whether it's from a boat or a kayak or on your feet. I just think like, it's something you can always get better at. No, for sure. It, so there's obviously there's a lot of different ways that you can approach river fishing. You got kayaks, you got John boats, you got, uh, mud boats, you got, you know, actual boats, depending on the depth of the river, you can bank fish it. You can do, you can wait it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Right. So we're just saying like in general, explore the river rivers are awesome they're a lot of fun and yeah one one example of uh knowing how to pick apart the water i'll give is like when i first hit the river i didn't understand the coloration difference of like silt versus sand and automatically thought that the silt spot was like a great spot to fish that looks like a hole right it's a camouflaged hole it's actually a (laughs) six inches deep and it's just silt <laughs> but if you jump like, in it's a hole and it's 25 feet if you deep, jump in you, you see your bye bye <laughs> it's underwater quicksand <laughs> don't, yeah. don't don't do that <laughs> Been there. So, yeah. that that is dude that's that's huge yeah somebody asked uh who's it somebody asked if i had a jumbo it was tyler asked if i had a jumbo i did sold it done done gone didn't have a an outboard anyways i wouldn't have gotten up my river <laughs> a 55 pound thrust trolling motor i would have been like going backwards <laughs> slowly. that's a nice drag anchor you got there yep pretty solid i'll be <laughs> hanging here for a while <laughs> oh do we go ice fishing tyler yeah we do we will be going ice fishing when the ice comes whenever that happens last year it happened super late yeah so i don't know we do have what is polar vortex this year oh for sure it's 2020 the it'll be like uh what was that like end of the world movie where like New York was like under 600 million feet of water and then like froze rock solid the next day, day after tomorrow, something like that. After tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So it'll be like that. Yeah. We'll get like a torrent, like six, five, six, seven, eight days straight of rain. Then the next day, the entire neighborhood will just be an ice rink. And the chill will like chase us. Do you remember that scene in the library where they're like Jake Jake Gyllenhaal and his girlfriend are like running from the chill? Is that who it was? It was Jake Gyllenhaal. (laughs) Yeah. And then just nerd. Randy Quaid. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, They had to run from the cold. You run from the cold, you guys. We did that on a giant lake last year. It was just. Oh, that's. Thanks. (laughs) Charles is. Man, big fan. He knows all the moments. Wait, hang on, Chaz. Are you watching Day After Tomorrow right now? I remember the part where they're in the eye of the storm, like, it's going to be just warm enough for us. We can make it. <laughs> he's, hell? he's like, pause, play, pause, play. <laughs> I got to guess. I remember the dog. Yeah. The t- they lie locked out, right? And then they died. Okay, I think we need to move on from day after tomorrow. I didn't mean All to right. touch such an important Chaz cinematic was, piece of art. If you guys are trying to think of a Christmas gift for Chaz this year, you can day send after tomorrow a poster, Jake Blu-ray, Gilles, shirtless, <laughs> special edition, holographic, signed, signed by Dennis Quaid and Dylan Hall <laughs> <laughs> in a block of ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, skill oh. number three. I have, and this is what we talked about a little bit, but uh, using your sonar. And, like, to great effect. Because I think most fishermen, no matter what the quality of sonar they have, they end up just turning it on and being like, ah, six feet deep, and I see fish. Woo! Or, like, I'm going four miles an hour. Fantastic. Like, y- y- they use it for, like, the most basic. Like, you could you can get You, you could have gotten away with buying the, the Honda Civic of, of sonars. But you bought the Ferrari, but you've never you've never gone past fourth gear. You don't even know how to use it. <laughs> you don't. You don't know it, and that's fine. But like, yeah. you know, understand that you have this incredibly valuable tool, and I understand that it is complex to use, and that it's not necessarily easy to just like get good at. And it, it it's not like I know they want to make it like they would so show that easy. picture. It's... That was sh- yeah, it's not. They show that picture of like a tree, and you can like read. Uh, J plus L in heart under in, in is carved into the tree like 30 feet underwater. That only happens when you like get the perfect setup. You get the perfect speed. You get your refresh rate just right. You get ultra clear water. 
But, like, you can do that. Like, they are that good. I mean, they're that good. But, like, you have to be... You have to be a you have to be a skilled user in order to get it to do like to to work the way that you want it to work, and that takes a lot of time and practice, and honestly, a lot of googling. I know um, DrSonar.com is something that I've talked about before. Like I subscribe. I was like, didn't we do an episode on this? We did, and this we like did. this this dude will give you like unreal yeah. advice. And and another piece of advice I didn't get to talk about was a great way to practice. That's like low pressure high fun and like a really really good practice go try and just pan fishing yeah they're not they're usually not hard to find um, there's some telltale things where you know and if you do it at the right time um like right after they get off the beds there's just it's it can be a really great way to practice just getting dialed in on your sonar um but yeah like the refresh rate, I think, is one of the ones that I think most people can figure out pretty easily and and really visually see what it can do. And then the second thing I'll say is messing with the gain. Like you could tell, even if you don't know what gain is, you'll you don't need to know. It doesn't matter when you crank the knob all the way up or you crank it all the way down. Like you'll figure out what it does, and yeah. you'll understand that. Like you can always hit the go back to factory settings. Like it's three buttons and like you can't break it right back to it. Like you can't break it permanently. It's not going to happen. So, um, I highly recommend that like put some time into it. It it will change your hashtag game. Like it, it it, it (laughs) can, it'll legitimately change the way that you think about fishing. Once it becomes like a skill set versus something that you're kind of like very apprehensive about or, or very just like dismissive of. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's funny, like, I didn't lean on them until I got one, and then I still didn't, I don't even think I used mine after I got it for, like, six months, until, like, we went fishing one time, we started using it, we, we started breaking it down, breaking down the water, I was like, I've been fishing, like, my lake, for example, the one right here, I was like, I've been fishing uh a third of this lake which is a barren wasteland and the fish literally never are like and if you're gonna get them it's random magic like they were cruising from there to there but they were never here (laughs) like you snagged one you know what i mean so it's like man all the wasted time where i was just like do i cast here like do i cast here what do i do uh yeah the sonar changes the game i mean if if you guys are bank fishing and you're like sonar whatever like i get that It is kind of helpful, though, to see, like, what is 30, 50, you know, 60 yards out from me. And you could cast a portable sonar, the little Bluetooth guys we've mentioned on episodes before. Cast it out there. What are you what are you rolling through? Like, let's say you want to throw a square bill, a crankbait. Like, what are you rolling over? Like, what, what, what sort of structure is out there? Is there a drop off out there? If you're throwing a Ned Rigger drop shot, could you, like, get it out to that drop off? It should take some accuracy and some practice. But if you know what's out there. I promise you it's helpful. Like it's extremely oh, helpful. Yeah. If you, it, um, I, th- there's no scenario where having more information is not going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, shit. I don't want to know more. Dang it. Like, no, <laughs> I don't I, want like to. it's, it's, it's going to help you. Like it will, it will help you even if it's helping you move on. Right. It, it's, it's helpful. Um, so yeah, so and I say manipulation, like the the skill of like understanding the different things that you can do. Like there are times when I over zoom and under gain my sonar in order to get the gain dialed in and, and fish that super deep water. A lot of times I'm just looking for something specific and different uh, that I can fish. Sometimes I'm just looking for a whole stretch of water that's just full of marks that I'm just going to drift in a lake. I do that yep. a lot. Um, I used the sonar to really great effect a couple of times a few weeks ago when we were doing like the mega slam. Um, yep. We had sat down on a beach at one point and right when we got off of it, I noticed there's a big drop off. I pulled two fish right off that drop off because I could see them there. Um, not even 200 yards, five, 100 yards from that same spot. There's this big hump that Jeff said was there. I was able to find it on my own, fished it for like 30 minutes, didn't catch Jack, but I could see there were fish down there. Went to the black and blue, got all the way down to the bottom and jerked Save one up day. right out of the hole. I mean, it's just, yeah. It, 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 if you get if you get skilled with it, even if it's just like you learn one thing in a season, it is absolutely worth your time. And it's something that, again, these are skills that like you just like, can't be good enough at. 
Yeah. <laughs> like you can never be like, too, like, I mean, it's not never but like realistically, like the, there's always something better that you could do with it. And the better you are, it, it's, it's helping you. There's no like max to it. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Construction. Steve says, teach me, Paul. <laughs> ah, hey, maybe we should do a video like on like a series where it's just like maybe i'll do it on my instagram which do like one thing i'll be like here's one oh, thing yeah. that you can that's what maybe i'll let man that's do that, that dude that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna bang on instagram man you're gonna blow I'll start up with, i'll start huge. with ice i'll start with ice fishing because i'll tell you this ice fishing season is gonna be nuts you guys dude, using my, we, you, we were we were not doing content last ice season no the first Oh, remember, you remember remember that can that that decided to take walk on me? <laughs> that would have been That's such a TikTok, TikTok waiting to happen, dude. <laughs> I, I, I bet I still have. That. I think you I'll, still have the film. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note. I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> like that was hilarious. <laughs> but we we were not doing anything. Like not. I think I had my camera and I was like, I'm not even gonna film this. Or or did it freeze? I think my batteries wouldn't even work. Like they were just dying, and I was like, ah, we don't. I need. got a pro tip for that that I want to tell people. So I've. You remember how like the older iPhones, they weren't insulated and they didn't have as much power. And so they would like drain if they were like in your pocket, like just in your pocket, um, like in your pants pocket or whatever. And it was really cold. And maybe people who are down south like have no idea what I'm talking about. You probably, I'm talking like 20 degrees and below. Nothing, nothing warmer than that. But when it's super cold, like you'd be running, right? And it would be like 30 degrees and your phone be on your little arm bandy deal. And and it would just die, and you're like, ah, why is fully charged, man? No, it's like seven degrees, and it drained your battery. Um, dude, the trick is just put it in your inside pocket by your chest. I keep mine in my waiter pocket, and it it could be. I mean, we're talking like dead nuts winter, and yeah. you're good. Like you will not have that problem. And now with your new battery pack, you can keep it like right inside here. You're not gonna have a problem. No, we'll we'll be we'll be good this year. Real quick, uh, Joseph wants a shout out, Joseph. Shout out! You've been outshouted. <laughs> You've been outshouted. All right, next. What's next? <laughs> yeah, next one. Uh, so my next one, and this one, prove me wrong. Tell me you're too good at fishing dirty water. Me? No, you know that. I, <laughs> I'm just saying it's general. Like everyone who's listening right now, like, is there anyone out there who thinks they're too good at fishing like really heavily stained water? I I don't think you can ever be too good at that. And if yeah. you are. You broke it. You you go start getting a paycheck yeah. for doing that because it's not easy. Um, I'll tell you, I've written a couple of articles about this. I've had some really good days fishing dirty water. I rarely approach them jacked up like I'm gonna rock the whole day. Yeah, I don't. I don't get out there and see like chocolate milk. Uh, you know, like a whole Hershey's powder thing dumped into a shot glass of milk and be like yeah i can't wait it's just it's harder um yeah. but i will tell you the things that i have learned um first and foremost cover becomes 10 times as important doesn't matter what time of year it is it does not matter what time of year it is uh the other thing too is your ability to cast becomes five times as important because what you're yeah. gonna have to do is you're going to have to bash a fish in the face. <laughs> you're going to have to hit them. Then you're then you can start fishing. Anytime yeah. you're casting around in stained water, you've already lost. You're not doing well. You, you're behind. Um, you want to hit ambush spots only, and that means either like some kind of structure mm -hmm. uh, or a, a place of safety. Uh, yeah. Because even predators, big predators their sense of like they're all their senses are dulled and like everything except for the most apex predators they're not out there hunting because they're not gonna find anything right like they are gonna have the same challenge that you are all of those fish are hunkered down by some piece of safety where they feel safe uh some piece of structure where they feel safe and in order for them to like go and eat something it has to be like the, the freest of meals the hottest of cheese pizzas like and it has to be free in a plate ready to be eaten in front of their face before they're gonna be like it's just not that's just how it is like that's just yeah. how it is like they look at that whole world as a danger zone with pikes swimming everywhere ready to just apex them right off the census data for that lake that's just what they're waiting for um 
So it's it's not easy. And then the other thing too is you can't be loud enough. That is the time yeah. to throw buzz baits, super big old spinner baits, the biggest jig with the biggest crawler that you can put on. Um, and the other thing, dark colors, black, dark purple. Uh, I don't want to see any white. I don't want to see any chartreuse. I don't want to see any orange. I don't want to see. I don't see any of that. I want to see black, red, blue. Um, and like dark, dark green pumpkin-y colors, nothing else. Yeah. No, that, that, there's definitely something that I need to practice more. So if you guys are out there not fishing chocolate milk, uh, our rivers typically, especially spring runoff chocolate milk, very, very chocolatey, very milky, <laughs> disgusting waters. And yeah, that's, that's something I've definitely had to get better at still need to keep practicing still need to like continue to further sharpen that edge uh and we'll continue to do so because i mean it's still a lot of fun i mean it's still river fishing and then you know just like you said you gotta thwack them in the face if you're gonna actually you know hook them and land a fish uh so it's a challenge i like challenges we challenge ourselves every time we go out we basically what did we say the other time i i want to give a shout out a call back to this we we said Fishing the boxes is like, what is it? Iron Chef? Yep. Iron Chef. We're, That's we're, exactly we're sh- what it is. We're sharpening that edge. We're getting better at that. We're getting good at fishing only what we're given. Yeah. <laughs> so eventually we're going to be like superstars at like the roulette uh, roulette wheel challenge. People will be like, oh, you got this orange spinner bait good luck well, and be like, that's, done that's that's what happens that's what, happens that's what happens in effect though i mean mm-hmm. it's nice with like monster bass because i'm getting something that at least i mean at least it's semi-tailored for like my region but uh yeah dude yeah. it there are times when you just sit there and you're like could have used this five weeks ago thanks um <laughs> you know <laughs> like I, how many how many times have you been like yeah oh I, yeah for maybe sure. next month i don't know um I got a uh, say it like almost every time for some lures. For sure. Yeah, we there's there's definitely stop Chaz. Chaz, Chaz is talking is trash. In our I just, ear. <laughs> there's definitely times where you're, and I mean you'd rather have it early than late for sure. But uh, like the the the, the top water box is well timed, right? And that makes a big difference when you are when you have become limited on a fishing trip to like trying to smash a box. Yeah, and then other boxes were ill-timed. And then also MTB, I got this poppin' frog this month. <laughs> so I was like, dang it again! That's Bad why news. I say, I mean, you didn't get a frog in the MB box, and that's probably because, like, it's useless here in Michigan right now. But, right, yeah. Yeah. Real right, quick, last, trophy, trophy Trout TV would like to know, what is your all-time favorite bait? All time. One yeah, bait. There's a whole to episode rule them for this. All. No, no, there are multiple oh, episodes for this of multiple categories. What is your all time favorite bait? Livingston Lures. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say one and it's going to be wrong. It's I'm going to be wrong. It won't make work because we have we actually wow. have. It's we your have... personal opinion. You can't be wrong. Can I finish? Do you want me to finish? No. Oh, I'm going to get through this. All favorite no. bait of all time. <laughs> all right. Go all right. I'm going to say it, but I know that it's going to be like yeah. we're going to do the all time favorite baits episode where we actually do list our our all time favorites of all okay. categories, and and it, it will it will it will just not be right. But uh, I think it has to the Rebel Popper. The Rebel Pop R. I've caught more fish. On yeah. a, a standard Basco, either that or the the Hedden Torpedo. I, yeah, I've caught more fish on those lures. Yeah. Um, on every type of rod that I have, like heavy bait caster, ultra light, everything in between, um, on almost any given day, and all different types of fish. I've caught yeah. trout on them. I've caught. I have not caught any like salmon on them, but I've caught largemouth, smallmouth, pike, bluegill, like I. Yeah, I've got gar on those. Like, you name it, I've caught it. They always work. I have confidence in them. They're not expensive. You can get them everywhere. They're super durable. Like, that's my one of those two. So Paul can't see chat, but Chaz says the Bukabul shed. 
I don't, you haven't fished that yet. I actually have one, this oh. tiny one, tiny one. To Ch- Chaz is laughing at me right now. I have like the you can buy this at stores in Michigan, Buka Bullshad. It's tiny, but I do think it's a pretty sweet swim bait. I I have thrown that a few times. It's that thing is dope. Um, not my favorite. Well, yeah, the bigger one that Chaz. No, think- Chaz's bigger one is better. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Anyways, Chaz, go back behind. <laughs> Moving <your side>. on. <laughs> all right. So, uh, wait, my favorite, my favorite yeah. of all time. I think, honestly, it's, it's the Mep. MEPS. No, it's the MEPS Aglia just because it's caught. It's like I've been fishing it since I was a child and it's amazing in any color any size and i've caught the most fish possibly ever of any lure on it the it's very close bird. second the very close second is the ned oh, i would please, say though what color and what size that matters this is a big deal uh number three chartreuse, chartreuse blade with the white feather treble yeah chartreuse Wait, and white what yeah really the chartreuse blade not number three. the not the black with the chartreuse spots and no. then the chartreuse tail? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 What is that? Is that the, is it called the uh, Black Fury? Yeah. Those ones? And yeah. it's the best one. I have those. No, no, I have those. The straight chartreuse blade in any lake here or any river here and lakes. Like I've caught the most fish on that one. Close second, silver blade. And then close silver third. Silver with the white and the red is. Silver, my white, numbers. and red. Yep, which came in the old man box. I'm dubbing it. The, the obviously, uh, you could call it the Paul box. That's fine. Came in the Paul box. <laughs> the smoking hot lures club. They gave me a Meps Agley, and I was like, mm, throwback. They hit me in my heartstrings, man. And we're good. Thanks for the refill. It's gotta. It's gotta be like that. I have so many of them too. And yeah, it's gotta. That's gotta be up there. That's gotta be my favorite one. The what? Ned, the Shart, Shart Turd, Shart Deuce. Are we calling it Shart Deuce? Yeah, Shart Deuce. Our deuce is number two for sure. Easy yeah. second. Yeah. Good question. I hate yeah. you for asking it, but good question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, all right. Yeah. Skill skill number five. Fishing a lure's sweet spot, and what I mean by that is not get not switching away too fast from a lure, and then yeah. on the flip side of that, not fishing not fishing something for way too long. Like, how many times have you gone out and been like, I'm going to make this work. It should work. I'm going to make it work. And then you just. Hang on now. When we do the box reviews, that doesn't isn't count. that basically what the whole thing is? But that doesn't count. That's totally different. All right. So for us personally, guys. And we've talked about. No, 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 no. We have talked about this. We specifically were like, look. Talk about this. Well, we've gotten murdered by it before where we've been like, yeah, I fished the gosh darn gigantic uh, tin Fifty dollars worth of aluminum buzz bait all goddamn day, oh, and it yeah. was not working. And you're like, maybe I just, just give it thirty minutes and then move on. And we're just gonna yeah. say, I'm sure it's good. It looks like it should work. It didn't work today. Moving on. It, it's hard to do because you're like committed to trying to, you know, show off what the lure it can possibly do. But sometimes yeah. it just ain't the cards that day. And you should be you should be fishing a drop shot, not a freaking this, buzz this bait. Is- this is exactly why it changed from a required slam to an on the water review was for that purpose entirely. It was like, I wasn't at that point. I was getting just too frustrated to even like say, have we even fished all the baits yet? <laughs> and like I'd be on one bait. And I'd be like, dude, are we freaking done yet? Just yeah. this is ridiculous. But yeah. So now it's like, okay, if it's Danny, the duck was in the box. I'm like, all right, we're going to fish it where pike should hit, bash should hit. If they're not hitting in 45 minutes, I think I did this on last two weeks ago. It would have been on the box that yeah, I yeah. fished on the water. A different box. Yeah. It, 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 box. And I fished it on the water. And uh, I think I said on the video, I was like, if this catches me a giant mus- a muskie, like I'll keep this box. <laughs> and it didn't. But I was like, I'll fish it in the only spot on this lake where they would be. And I'll fish it for 45 minutes. And I did that. I timed it. I did it. I fished all three of those top waters. And then I was like, I'm out. And then we fished the rest of the baits, like the rest of the time on the other side of that lake. But yeah, sometimes you just got to do that. No, for sure. Like you can definitely and then you get inside your own head and you're like like you said i'm gonna make but that's where it's like i think i think you have to and this is where i feel like we talked about this before where like knowing how to use a lure 
Right. And that comes with experience. So like a whopper plopper, like understanding that it's not necessarily flat still water that you want to fish it. You want to fish it with a wake, with a chop. Like that's yeah. that is where it excels because it, it actually stands out from even the chop. Um, crankbaits, I think, are a great example. And this yeah. is where I this is where I feel like one of the reasons why I have been successful with crankbaits and why they're a go to for me is that I don't give up on them too early. But I don't mm-hmm. run them too hard too long. And you need to try 15, 20 casts, three yep. or four or five at different speeds, uh, and sometimes with like a erratic motion. And you, you have to throw them in a couple different spots before you know, like, this ain't it today. This ain't the one. Um, this ain't the one. <laughs> but I'm not going to run it all day either. And the uh, same thing goes with the Ned. Don't have success with the oh, net yeah. in a rocky bottom. Then you hit sand and silt where the fish can't even see it and fish it for the rest of the freaking river. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Um, it's it's a fine line because you may have, like, the lure of the day tied on and you didn't give enough time. And then the flip side of that is you may have the lure of the, uh, of the day in the box and you may not even yeah. get to it because you ran the freaking A-rig all freaking day. <laughs> You're Been there. daggers been there like, when, when you love a, the look of a bait and the idea of a bait yes. so much that you're like this is gonna work no bro i believe i believe and, and then, then you ruin your whole day we have, we cast that was that the live target bait ball we I cast, cast that, that pos at least 100 times at least <laughs> at least at, multiple and trips done. sorry we kept, we kept getting it out until I finally, mine is hanging on the wall. I was like, I'm never taking this on a trip ever, ever, ever again. Because we just cast it and cast it and cast it's it. In the, like, it's in the rip box for sure. Yeah. RIP to that bait. Uh, Construction Steve says, how much chop is too much chop? For what? For what? The water. The water. Like the chop of the water. The waves. To, to like exist on it? Or to how, how, fish on it? What's the... how, rough, how rough is too rough to go fishing in our kayaks? Oh, your opinion uh, we're speaking about a lake not a river i would say first and foremost <laughs> if you're on a super 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 big piece of water it does make a difference oh yeah so if i'm on like lake michigan uh consistent just at white cap level makes me very very nervous there's a lot of power there and there's a lot of death all around you i'm i'm not feeling great if i'm on like just a big like a really big lake like a you know, f- f- like a, a big lake i i still not like the great lakes i mean like just like a large inland body of water i'm still like i'm white caps is not necessarily an issue so i'm thinking yeah. like 20 mile an hour winds and two foot swells it's probably my max you mean sunday when we go out yeah, this is gonna be, it's gonna be that's twenty probably, mile an hour wind. Yeah, that's probably my max because I think at a two foot swell is where I'm like, yeah, this this is coming over the edge every time I'm perpendicular. So that's oh. pretty much my that's pretty much my line. Yeah, um, I mean you got to keep yeah. in mind too, like the size. Even though our kayaks are like enormous kayaks, they're still tiny pieces of plastic floating on a giant body of water. Uh, you know, water. You guys, water is a powerful thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Tell me more. I don't, I, don't even, I don't know if you guys know. The water is really powerful. I don't know if you guys uh, know. Jeff was trained by Bill Nye, the science guy. It's really showing. Uh, Cap- Captain Planet. What are you talking about? He's our hero. <laughs> water is one of those amazing elements that formed Captain Planet. It's kind of powerful. Uh, yeah, well, no- so did Hart. And that doesn't really count, does it? <laughs> that, kid to, that kid talked to monkeys. Be quiet. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not a millennial. Yeah, welcome to our lives. Somebody earlier was like, how old are you? And I was like, 32. And they they were saying like 21, 25. I was like, oh, I'm so flattered. No, I'm like just hard 32. (laughs) Like like old, decrepit 32. I thought you were, wow. All right. No, anyways, back to my point. Water will kick your butt. It, it will chew you up, spit you out. It will beat you to death. It is a bad, bad mamma jamma. So if, if we're on like our kayaks, like I'm not, mm, it's, uh, mm, yeah, if it's like maybe two foot swells, which I think is what uh, Paul said, like I am going to 
not worry about flipping my boat. I know that that boat's not going to flip in that, but it's going to be just, I'm wet and being pelted and filled with water and the water's, you know, running out of the scupper holes and all that. But it's just, am I going to put up with this? It's going to be so hard to stay put. We did have that day. It was not, wouldn't have been two foot, but like, well, that, that was like 15. No, to, well, well, it was like 15 to 20 mile an hour. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, it was not, it was not pretty. Yeah, we were getting wrecked, and we got out to, like, the biggest part of that body of water, of that chain of lakes, and I was just like, we need, I'm done. We need to, we need to turn around and go back to the smaller section, <laughs> so we did. Uh, it was awful. Um, yeah, <laughs> Dunbar, the fishing machine, says, yeah, just watch the video where Jeff got owned by the river. Hey, guys, water's a powerful thing. This is a PSA to let you know, because oh. also... <laughs> Paul sent me out there. Paul just he was like, he'll be fine. And didn't tell me not to do it. So oh, Paul please. consented to this trashing. <laughs> yeah, but but also uh I thought because I was reading water and I saw you could see this in the video, the to the right to the right of the dam. All the way up along the tree line was yeah. actually very trim water. Yes, it was you were you would have been going upstream, yeah. but it was very calm water, like no undertow, very little swirl, uh, lots of things to grab onto. And I was like, I I thought like what I would have done was take my pet my paddle, and I would have actually paddled up that. Yeah until you got See, to the point here, where that ran out and then instead here's of what doing, you didn't here's what you didn't understand kayak, i even pointed your kayak right at that and then here, jeff is, his kayak's facing this direction and this is like a calm nice area and he yeah. immediately goes and like guess, i was like guess ah, how much guess guess how much guess how much choice i had in doing that paul I, this much choice zero choice it was literally I, like <laughs> This is how powerful water is. I was like, go this way. And the water was like, nope. I was surprised. I'll be honest. I, I was, was like, stunned. No, no, no. Once you were once I saw how fast you were pedaling. If you haven't watched this video, it's worth a watch. It's hilarious. Do you know what it's called? I don't know. Kayak, what it. It's called kayak fishing disaster. <laughs> As As it is. We broke everything, and that was also the day that I lost my brand new like Dobbins Fury combo. <laughs> like <laughs> it was, I was Croc Venture. Yeah. No, you you did come help me get my boat out, and we bent my pedals. Uh, <laughs> I remember I remember saying very vividly, "There's something in the way." And you're like, "No, no, no, just pull me out." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and, and then, like in my head, that something in the way song plays, <laughs> just like sad sad melody hits, and I'm just oh, like, God. "No." That and then, like, then I just like was sadly breaking tree branches and like, man. I did. I did bang a nice fish on that day though there at the end. But you started the funny thing was like it was a karma switch. It was like yeah. I caught a ton of fish and you broke a rod in the beginning of the trip. <laughs> yes. And like I lost dude, that trip was insane. I that lost the sock plate. I lost the side plate to my uh Revo wow. SX and I was like, okay, neat. And like you broke a rod, you just hiked it. You were just like whoop. <laughs> it was hilarious. Was so bad. And I was just catching fish while you were fi fixing your broken stuff and then i was happy and then i lost the abu side plate and then it just like spiraled out of control and then we pulled into you know the dam and then all that bad stuff happened and then i lost my rod and then like you kept catching fish and like your nicest fish was after all that yeah. <laughs> well i was i was docked i just like pulled into the shore and i was just like i give up <laughs> slumped down so Slump just that, dude, heated <laughs> there's not there's not enough power bars to 180 that day yeah it's brutal <laughs> it was it was it was rough. It was rough. But anyways. <laughs> so that's what I had for top for five skills. I, I guess the question I'll put out there, um, any other skills that we forgot? Any other skills that you would like? Like I construction Steve asked about some sonar stuff. I may have to we may have to incorporate that in a later video. Um, but is there anything out here that you'd like to see more of? Anything you'd like to see explained better? Um, any skills that we forgot that should have been on the list? Um let us know. That could be the, it'll, it might be the next video. Yeah, there'll be, you know, again, like I said, we weren't really 
uh, creating content last spring winter. Right. Uh, so this year you'll get what the heck do we do in winter and spring? It's going to happen. There's going to be some like creation of lures in different capacities. There will be like some fishing through solid ice in some capacity. There'll be a lot of different stuff. So I think there will be more variety here. And then I also think that we're going to have an opportunity to get some different species that we don't normally catch. You know, hopefully we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna try some things so yeah we'll we'll get out there we'll get after it uh wrapping up this episode sir anything else any any shout outs any f- closing thoughts or are you gonna are you gonna freeze on me you're gonna freeze on me so i have to close the show myself That's classic kind of move <laughs> are you there are you alive <laughs> Am I Paul. there? Am I alive? You tell I me. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Paul's Paul's fine. He's there. He's somewhere. Everything's I, great. <laughs> We're not going to give him a minute. We're going to close the show, Chaz. It's over. I'm not giving him a minute. <laughs> he just keeps freezing up. <laughs> oh, my God. Have, have your sip. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. It's been a lot of fun. We do this every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out. Bring your friends, your fishing friends. Grab your pops. We like to hang out and have a good time. Kayak bow fishing. Yes, Mike. Gonna happen. Gonna be a thing. We're planning it. We we are saying that for forever. There, there's perhaps some engineering of the kayaks that needs to occur to make that happen. And also maybe LEDs. Yeah, we, we we get the LED set up, but one of us needs to also purchase a, a bow set up. So, yeah, that's me. We'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to do that. And also, preferably, we're going to need to be able to get into Canada again. So, uh, Chaz, don't even say it. Chaz, I know Chaz is back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, alligator gar fishing. Okay. I mean, look. Well, I can't we can't get alligator gar. We can get there. regular gars. Yeah. We can, yes, I think that'll be good. We will travel. Traveling will happen. It's going to go down. We'll we'll be fishing with some super cool fishing buddies here next year. It's going to happen. I'm not going to name names. It's just going to happen. So just stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. So if you want to stay tuned for that, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Burley Fishing. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the works, all the stuff, all the things. Uh, And subscribe to the podcast. You know what you could do that would be super helpful? I would thank each of you individually is you could drop us a five-star review on the podcast when you subscribe. And if you haven't dropped a five-star review and you're subscribed and you're like, who is my boy that was listening for 27 hours with his wife? Probably more like 40 hours. Yeah, bro. Is it Tyler, Tyler, somebody, somebody back in here said that it's way back in chat. I can't find it, but yeah, if you're listening, I appreciate that. If you can throw us a five-star review helps us out a whole lot more so you guys have been awesome thanks for hanging out with us tonight and we'll catch you next week we'll see you out on the water